Hi everyone, I'm Lynn and I'm so glad you're joining me again on the Crafty Meraki YouTube channel. Today I'm making a fun little mini slimline card using some products from my favorite things, Pinkfresh Studio and of course, Crafty Meraki. I stamped these lovely little images from the Sprinkling You With Love stamp set by My Favorite Things onto Canson Mobile 200 GSM watercolor cardstock. I stamped them in Versafine Onyx Black ink because that's a really crisp black and then I clear embossed it with WOW Clear Gloss Superfine Embossing Powder. And this doesn't just give it a nice finish, but it also makes it really easy to color because it's so much harder to color outside of the lines when there's an embossed line. I still color outside of the lines a lot, but imagine how bad it would be if I didn't emboss my images. I'm keeping the coloring very simple and I'm using my Karen brush markers to color these images in. These make water coloring super easy and I love the colors of these. They're just so bright and vibrant. Look at that yellow and that purple, that blue of the cloud. It's just so gorgeous. So the way I color with these markers is I just put down some color with the marker in whatever area I want darkest, and then I can blend that out with a fine paintbrush and some clean water. I do prefer working on watercolor cardstock for this, especially because I'm actually watercoloring with these markers. But even if you just use the markers, you can use the markers on their own. You don't have to use water with them. I find it that they work best on watercolor cardstock. Because watercolor cardstock is made to not absorb whatever medium you put on top of it immediately. And this makes it easy to slide the color around. So again, you can use these markers just by themselves. Um, you can use dark markers and then just medium tones, light tones, or you can use the blending markers that come in the sets, but you can also buy those separately. Now, I also like to work in layers when watercoloring or when doing any kind of coloring. I say that in all my videos, but what that means for watercoloring at least is I make sure that my first layer is completely dry and then I can go in with a second layer to deepen up the shadows. And a second layer usually also makes the blending more smooth and even. Now, before I colored these images in, I already had a plan in mind of a color scheme for this card, and I knew I was going to do a yellow matting layer. So that's why I'm coloring a couple of the accessories on these little bears in yellow. And I also used purple because that's a great complement to yellow. Whenever I plan on including colored cardstock in my card, I try to choose it before doing my coloring because I find it easier to adjust my colored images to my paper than doing it the other way around. Because I never seem to have a colored cardstock that actually matches whatever I colored. For the background panel, I used a die by Pinkfresh Studio from the mini Slimline Essentials bundle die set to cut a piece of Clairefontaine DCP 250 GSM cardstock. This is great cardstock to do ink blending on and it's nice and crisp white. I'm also using Pinkfresh Studio ink to do my blending and I'm using a stencil by My Favorite Things. I will list all the products again in the description box below. I'm rotating the stencil around and even turning it over to make sure I get a nice cloud pattern. And I am applying all the inks with a blending brush because I find that's the easiest way to get a smooth blend. I'm using the Summer Shower ink by Pinkfresh Studio and I really love how that color turned out. I usually go for the more teal colors and stay away from the really true blues but I really like this one and I probably will use it a lot for my skies in the future. 
Now I'm die cutting my big sentiment from the background. I'm using the thanks from the thanks slimline tag die by Crafty Meraki. And I am taping that in place with some purple tape. I die cut that same thanks die four times from thick white cardstock and layered all of those together with Braille Art Precision Craft Glue. And I can then layer on my cloud patterned thangs as well. So the pattern on my background will continue over my sentiment, so it won't interrupt the background too much, but the added dimension will make it stand out nicely. I also cut four more panels of thick white cardstock to layer behind my background panel to add some dimension to it as well. And I'm just adding glue to my background panel to um, adhere that onto that added dimension. And once that's in place, I can just pop in the dimensional thanks sentiment and that would make for a really nice background. So I can just add some glue to the back of that thanks. Now I did also save all of the negative spaces. There aren't a lot with this die. Most of the negative spaces, as you can see, are still attached to the background. But there are a couple, the inside of the A, there's a negative space in the H and the K. And I save those, so I'm just putting glue in those openings now. And I can very carefully um, push those pieces in place. And I tried it with a pin first, but then I am choosing my tweezers instead. Anything that you can get into those small spaces should work for um, pushing those pieces into place. Also, this background was subtle enough that it wouldn't have shown much if I just left those spaces open, but I basically just did it for my own peace of mind. It would have barely been noticeable if you had left them white. Now with all those pieces in place, that's the background basically finished. So then I also made a sentiment strip. I just stamped a sentiment from the stamp set onto black cardstock with first mark ink and embossed that in wow bright white super fine embossing powder. And I'm doing the same thing to add dimension to this piece. I just cut four strips of black cardstock and am layering those together and putting that onto my sentiment strip. Now onto this mini slimline card, I am gluing a piece of yellow cardstock. This is a really bright yellow, I love it. And I am just gluing that straight on and then I can assemble everything on top of that. I love using liquid glue for this because I never get it just right from the first go and liquid glue gives you some wiggle room. Now I'm centering my background panel on top of that and there is some added dimension there, like I said. So this is quite a thick card, but it'll still go through the mail nicely. I'm putting that sentiment right in the center, which I usually don't do, but it was nice with this thanks sentiment. I'm adhering the critters with some foam tape, but you can use foam squares or liquid glue, whatever you have. I just prefer using foam tape because there's less backings to peel off than with foam squares. Now these uh, bears do cover quite a bit of the sentiment, but because the letters are so large, I think it's still legible. Aren't these little bears adorable? I could make dozens of cards with these. Now I did forget to color in the noses and I will do that later just with a black Karen brush marker. Of course, I couldn't resist adding some embellishments to this card. I am using the Glass Crystal Collection by Little Things from Lucy's Cards. And this is a mix of a lot of different clear embellishments. There are some clear drops in there. I think they are called raindrops. And these are the hearts that I'm putting on as well. I really like those. They're just super subtle. I like clear embellishments. They add a little bit of shine, but not too much to distract from your design. 
Of course, I am making a matching envelope. I chose a light blue cardstock that matched the background pretty well, the background of my card pretty well. And I'm folding a mini slimline envelope from that in my We Are Memory Keepers 123 punch board. Now, if you use this punch board to fold mini slimline envelopes, your bottom and top flap will be a little bit too long. They will overlap so your envelope won't close correctly. And that's why you saw me trimming some of that off. I just aligned the score line with one of my centimeter marks on my trimmer. And that way I get a nice straight cut. To decorate this envelope, I am using that same cloud stencil by My Favorite Things and the same ink by Pink Fresh Studio to blend on the cloud pattern. I chose this cardstock because it was a close match to the cloud background I made before. That means it's a close match to the ink I'm using right now. So I'll end up with a fun, subtle tone on tone look for this cloud background. Now I love making matching envelopes and I love decorating my envelopes, but I love it more when my card arrives safely. <laughs> So I always stick to the left side of my envelope to decorate it and then I can just write my address plainly on the right side. I don't do any fancy lettering for my addresses. I am not good at fancy lettering and I also just want the postman to be able to read my uh, handwriting and I think my plain handwriting is more legible. Now once I'm done with this background, I can put this in my Misty and I'm going to stamp something on it as well. You absolutely don't have to do that. I think the clouds are decoration enough really, but I'm using one of the same stamps I used on the card design and I am embossing that in WOW bright white super fine embossing powder on the envelope and that finishes it nicely. And that's my card and envelope all done. I really like how this card turned out with the bright yellow. I am a sucker for yellow and it matches the sky nicely. It's a sunny day, even though that bear is making it rain. I hope you liked it too. If you did, make sure to leave a like on this video and leave your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to read them. And of course, make sure to subscribe to the Crafty Meraki YouTube channel if you want to see more of my videos because I'll be back every Saturday. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.